After a few shots, just like he planned, his impatient opponent rushes out. But with his superior positioning and great jiggled peaks, Savage ends up winning. What's going on, guys? Listen, this is not your ordinary guy. No, no, no. This is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. The guy who believes in you. The guy who's rooting for you. Man, the guy that says every single day, every single week, man, to not give up, to not surrender, all right? So I hope you guys are taking it in because, man, this is just the beginning. You know, lately, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on our What Would You Do videos, which is really cool, where we analyze pros and ask how, you know, you think they should play it, right? So since you guys love them so much, we just had to bring you another with new tips for season three. Okay guys, so today we're gonna be looking at three pros, the Dutch legend Mitro, 200 IQ Mr. Savage, and a cracked yet underrated player, Moki. Okay, so the thing with these pros is that they're all extremely proficient fighters, all right? Not only mechanically, but also game sense wise as well. So by watching and analyzing their play styles, we should be able to pick up a thing or two for ourselves. But before we start, if you enjoy our content, a quick like on the video would be very much appreciated, my friends. And check to see you're subscribed, all right? So you don't miss a video. Let us know in the comments how many of these scenarios you get right. I'm so excited to know. All right, guys, Bunch of Crunch Army, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. You better say this whole thing with me. Here we go. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that Bunch of Crunch. Let's get this going. All right, so most people praise Mitro for his mechanical prowess, right? But honestly, you'd be surprised at how often it's his planning that helps him get kills. In this game, he lands at the pontoon, the really overpowered solo spot. And right off the start, man, he gets himself into a couple of awkward off-spawn scraps. Mitro manages to win them both, but as he's picking up his loot, he starts getting shot at by somebody far away on land. So Mitro's pretty confident, so he tries to force them to peek so he can trade shots. But the guy doesn't budge. And as he inspects the area, he notices another enemy preparing to push the first one. Mitro finishes looting, pops a pepper, and now he's ready to go third party. Okay, so at this point, how do you think Mitro should get there? Should he take the boat or swim across instead? All right, guys, so the right thing to do is swim across. Okay, let me tell you why. When you have a pepper active, it makes you swim incredibly quick, right? Pretty much as fast as a boat. You might be saying, well, the boat has rockets, I can just shoot at them. But that hardly ever does anything at this level of gameplay. It mostly just disrupts and just slows down the fight they're having. So there's really no point in him taking the boat, making a ton of noise, you know, attracting all the attention and potentially getting beamed by the two players fighting. Anyways, Mitro notices a kill pop up in the elimination feed and arrives just in time to find this fight over. But look how sneaky his approach is, okay? He crouch walks to conceal his footsteps and hides behind the tree. Big question, my friends. All right, with the enemy standing out in the open, what would you do here? Go for the shot or hold your fire and wait for a better shot? Well, it's kind of a lousy shot Mitro has right here. His opponent's far and strafing back and forth on high ground. Okay, so if he attacks now, <laughs> he gives up his position and risks being stuck low ground for the rest of the fight. So waiting is the smarter play. And look, because of another player approaching, this guy leaves their high ground spot and Mitro ends up getting an easy double dink. Okay, so now that they're weak, he rushes in, side jumps for height and takes advantage of a fatal flaw. His opponent doesn't even cover every opening. All Mitro has to do is just switch up angles a ton until he finds his way for the kill. Unfortunately, Mitro couldn't foresee the stream snipers <laughs> that would show up to bully him right after, which made the remainder of his match pretty uh, uneventful. But still, the Alim was a great demonstration of how sneakiness can matter a ton. Okay, so now we're going to move to Mr. Savage, one of the best pros in the world. But speaking of the pros, if you ever wanted to play with or learn from one, you should check out ProGuides.com. We've got courses from Mongrel and Benji, as well as live classes and expert coaches, all waiting to help you get better. So check the link in the description if you're ready to start your path to improvement. 
So in this match, and you know, a lot of his arena matches, Savage likes to drop at the authority. So the grappler and vault loop that you can get here is pretty much a golden ticket to having a successful game. However, because of that, everyone and their grandma lands here. Like literally, I know a lot of people are playing with their grandmas. And so you have to be very watchful during the early game. Okay, so to start, Savage lands just outside the boss's office, where Jules actually has a decent chance of spawning. Lucky for Savage, she's here in this game, so with his shoddy, he immediately pushes in and he gets her loot. However, the thing to note is that Savage ends up later on dropping the drum gun for a green SMG. It may have seemed like blasphemy to drop a mythic weapon, but the new drum gun is nowhere near it was last season. It's actually quite weak compared to regular SMGs and P90s, so most pros, including Savage, don't even bother to use it. But once Savage loots the entire basement, he makes his way through the vents and toward the vault entrance. Players are still lurking, so he's cautious, making sure to clear every corner and surround the vault with builds before inserting the keycard. But once it's open, how do you think Savage should play this one? Should he? Open just one chest to see if it baits any opponents into attacking? Or go right to the back of the vault, put up a wall, and just loot everything right away? Well, there are still players potentially waiting, and if Savage backs himself into the vault right away, he might end up getting pinned back there, right? So, it's actually better to just open one chest and wait to see if anyone tries attacking. That ends up being the case here, and an opponent starts breaking his wall. Savage applies a bit of pressure back, which ultimately leads to nothing. Okay, so this spot outside the vault is vulnerable, so he makes the decision to grapple out and escape the enemy. But as he does, he hears them engage in a fight with someone else. My question is, would you head back down to third party the fight or head back down to loot the vault while they're distracted? Well, Savage Loadout is actually in a great spot, so he doesn't really need to hit up the vault immediately, right? Instead, it's actually better to go for the kill opportunity while he can. He rushes up, he gets the enemy to critical health, and with them tossing chug splashes, he doesn't even bother with the wall replace. It's just a simple pickaxe into the box to clean up this kill. So with one enemy down and the other on the run, Mr. Savage can now hit up the vault. So he loots it up, then he heads back out to search for the remaining players. The first one of which he finds camping in the vents. They catch Savage entirely off guard and manage to hit a nasty shot on this one. But again, you know, this is why the grappler is so amazing. You could just disengage and just create space with it incredibly quickly. So Savage gets away and he pops his minis, no problem, right? For the rest of his HP, he makes another visit to the vault. But when he exits, there's a player lurking waiting for him. Now, pay close attention to the way Savage wins this fight step by step, my friends, okay? Check this out. First, he plays at a distance for the wall replace. Instead of just getting in a riskier pickaxe position, he takes the wall with his shotgun and doesn't hesitate to get in their face. The enemy edits their cone, so Savage's next move is to block off any open exits, which he does with the wall. Okay, so after that, it's time for cone control, and with that one, the ball is entirely in his court. There's nowhere for the enemy to run, and Savage picks up the frag. Nice. But right away, the last authority player comes lurking out of nowhere. They land a huge tag with their P90. So what does Savage do? Disengage with his grappler so he can just heal up freely? After popping his minis, Savage heads back to the vault and he finds them hiding in the back. Now, what would you do if you were Savage in this spot? Go inside the vault and just try to brute force your way to the enemy? Or pressure them from this spot? Because you can't build by vault doors, they're one of the most dangerous places you can fight. So if Savage rushes in, who wins It's mostly going to be a 50-50 toss up, all right? So it's just much safer for him to hold his right hand angle while slowly pressuring them out. After a few shots, just like he planned, his impatient opponent rushes out. But with his superior positioning and great jiggled peaks, Savage ends up winning. And that's that, man. Like, that's how Savage approaches landing at the authority. Aggressive, but slowly played when needed. 
All right, guys, so Moki just finished a fight at the agency when all of a sudden she hears another opponent rushing up toward her. First thing she does is apply pressure. Her quick scope doesn't connect, but she does manage a solid SMG spray, forcing them to box up. At this point, would you rather keep your high ground position to spray the box or drop down and pressure them up close? Well, after these tags, the enemy's definitely turtling the hill up, right? So Moki needs to drop down and prevent that. I like her approach because she uses her weapons to pressure and replace builds, something a lot more of us need to do to counter edit plays, right? But either way, they drop down, Moki chases, and when they box up again, she pulls out this amazing trick, wow. By editing a floor tile close to the wall, she can place a cone inside her opponent's box before even having access to it. Man, that's cool. Now her opponent can't even edit down but the enemy's still trying to heal up, so she goes for the wall while they're distracted. The enemy makes the mistake of going for the 50-50 fight, and Moki wins it. Immediately after, a third party swoops right in. They land above Moki, and they just try to spray their way in through the top. So Moki retreats to a box. She has full control and just traps them when they enter. Okay, so with the enemy trapped in your box behind your ramp, how would you play this one, man? Would you edit out and find another angle of approach, or edit the ramp and just go for a close range duel. Considering this player is probably at full health, editing the ramp is like flipping a coin here, right? You might win, but it's pretty much down to whoever gets luckier with their shots. So instead, with them trapped, you know, it's always better to edit out and find an advantageous angle. Moki double edits out the top, and instead of shooting them, she edits her floor and drops them to their demise. And just like that, man, Moki deals with two aggressive arena players like it's nothing. Okay, my friends, all right, it's about that time. You know, we're almost at the end of the clip, but you know, we wanna do a recap, okay? So we gotta, we gotta do this, here we go. Mitro taught us the power of stealth and patience. This guy snuck up, he waited for his opponent to leave their high ground spot, then opened fire when the time was right, ultimately helping him pick up the kill. With Mr. Savage, we learn enemies love to flank vault openings, man. Like typically, when you have a key card, you want to play it cautiously and even try to bait out players before committing to inside the vault. And also, he never forgot to use his mobility item, the grappler, to disengage when needed. That's something that a lot of us need to remember when the going gets tough, and I am one of them. I can admit, we have to get better. And Moki taught us that, you know, you don't want to give up on high ground until you know your opponent is committed to boxing up. That typically only happens after you damage them enough so that they need to heal, right? So keep that in mind for the next time you get into a build battle. And when an opponent rambles into your box, it's almost always best to first separate with a ramp, then edit out the side or top and find a better angle of attack. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like the video, man. Subscribe to the channel. We got so much cool stuff coming out. And make sure to connect with your boy on Insta at your motivation guy. Also, remember to let me know in the comments how many of these scenarios you guessed correctly. All right, we'll catch you guys soon. Peace.